In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at one of the laws of exponents, and it's going to be the quotient rule. Now, technically, in all textbooks, the quotient rule for your laws of exponents states that when dividing like bases, you subtract the exponents. All right, that is a true statement. All right, and if you do it traditionally, you subtract top minus bottom, and you can end up with some negative exponents at the end. All right, some people don't like those negative exponents, so there is a way to avoid them if that you struggle with doing it that way. So an alternate rule would be here. It's going to allow you to avoid your negative exponents. We're going to subtract the exponents like normal, and we're going to place the answer where the highest exponent is. Okay, now that may um, not make sense right now, but as I do these examples, I think this is going to make sense. Okay, so let's just start with this right here. We've got just your standard x to the seventh over x to the third. Clearly, like bases, and I've got the quotient rule. So I'm going to subtract like normal in the sense that I'm just going to take seven, take away three, I get a four. All right, so x to the fourth. All right, now if I take a look at these two, my x to the seventh is in my numerator, my x to the third is in the denominator, so I would have an x to the fourth in the numerator. All right, so I just have a plain x to the fourth over one. All right, but we don't have to write it over one, so you just get your regular x to the fourth. Now that's the same thing as if you were just to subtract seven minus three and get four. Now, on this one though, let's apply the new rule here. I've got x to the fourth over x to the ninth. Now I'm going to subtract like normal. So what I mean by subtract like normal is take big number minus small number. So go ahead and subtract nine minus four. I get a five. All right, so I'm going to have an x to the fifth. Now I'm going to take a look at x to the fourth and x to the ninth. I'm going to see that my x to the ninth has the highest exponent. So then that means that my x to the fifth is going to go down in the bottom. Okay, now there is an imaginary one coefficient that sets right there in front of that x to the fourth. So I still have that one right there in the numerator. Okay, so let's go ahead and circle those answers there. All right, now let's come over here to this example. All right, I'm going to apply this rule to the a's and then the b's and then my c's here. I've got an a to the fourth over an a to the second. So I'm going to subtract on my a's like normal or take away two, it's going to give me a two. My a to the fourth is in the numerator, so that's where my a squared is going to go. All right, and then I'm going to do it to my b's. I'm going to subtract like normal, 14 take away nine. 14 take away nine is going to be five. I'm going to put it in the bottom because b to the 14th is in the bottom. So I'll have a b to the fifth. All right, now C, C over C, anything over itself is just one. If I look at this with imaginary exponents, one minus one is going to give me a zero. C to the zero powers one. I'm just going to cross those out, all right? So I don't have a C in my final answer at all. All right, and then not anticipating how long that was going to be, I don't need that extra part there. So I'm just going to have a A squared over B to the fifth. All right, now let's come down here and take a look at this one. I do have now a coefficient, all right? Coefficient, it pretty much is just going to stay there. Okay, so I'll have five right there. I'm gonna take a look at the x's. I'm gonna subtract like normal. Eight take away four is gonna be a four. I'm gonna have an x to the fourth. It will go in the top because x to the eighth is in the top, so x to the fourth. All right, now I'm gonna take a look at those y's. I'm going to not forget that there's an imaginary one in front of that y right there. Now I'm going to subtract like normal. It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to take 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 is going to give me a 6. I'm going to have a y to the 6th. Because the y to the 7th is bigger than the y to the 1st, it's in the bottom. My y to the 6th goes in the bottom. Okay. Okay, coming over here, now I not only have a coefficient in the top, but I also have a coefficient in the bottom. All right, if that's the case, I can just cover up everything and just kind of treat that as a fraction, 30 over 5, reduce it to lowest terms, however you want to do this, 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 36 times, okay, so that means I know I'm going to have a 6 there in my numerator. Taking a look at those x's, I'm going to subtract, 12 minus 3 gives me a 9, so I'll have an x to the 9th in the top because the 12 is bigger, so x to the 9th, I'm going to do it to my y's, 12 minus 9 straight, 12 minus 9 is just going to give me a 3. I'm going to put my y to the 3rd in the bottom because of that y to the 12th. So I'll have a y to the 3rd. Okay, now 
this last example, I saved this for the best here because uh, each one of these all had positive exponents. I didn't already have negative exponents in there. All right, if you've been working with laws of exponents, you know the negative exponents you can't have. So pretty much you can move them to the bottom and make them positive. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. The base and the exponent. I'm not going to move the coefficient. I'm not going to move this y to the third. I'm going to move this x to the negative 4 down to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to move it to the bottom. All right, which means it's no longer in the top and I'll have a x to the positive 4 in the bottom, okay? Now, when I do this, I'm going to have my 2, which is going to remain there in the top. So we've got the 2. All right, now, my x's now are no longer, I don't have quotient rule. I now have product rule, which is hopefully something you've already learned. When multiplying like bases, add the exponents, and it's in the denominator, so it's going to stay in the denominator. So I'll have an x to the 12th. All right, now, back to my y's, the quotient rule is going to apply, subtract, don't forget there's the imaginary 1 on that y, so 3 take away 1 is going to give me a 2, and the y to the second there will go in the top. Okay, so even if you have negative exponents, this still will work if you get rid of the negative exponents first, make them positive, and then that turns possibly you into using a product rule here, and still quotient rule on your other variables. So, um, just a little video here focusing on that quotient rule, a different way to approach it than is normally traditionally taught, and all it does is just allow you to avoid those negative exponents. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please don't forget to share with your friends so they can benefit as well. Thanks.